The Roto Brush in the After Effects beta version has recently been updated with promises of two to five times speed increases. So in this video, I'm gonna test that out, compare it to the current version of After Effects and see if those claims are true. Before we jump in, I do wanna tell you about my brand new course called Launch in After Effects, which is a comprehensive intro to After Effects where you get to make 10 really fun projects, over 20 hours of content. There's even a tier where you can get access directly to me in a community with other students. So head to jakeinmotion.com if you're interested in getting a real grasp on how After Effects works and applying it to real world projects. We also have a Discord server for the Jake in Motion community. That's free to join. Follow the link down in the description. I'd love to see you in there. Now for this test with the After Effects beta, I went into it blind. I updated to the latest version and put in the clip and you get to watch my reaction to exactly how it unfolded the first time I tested it out. So let's take a look at that now. All right, so I haven't done anything yet. This is my first time in the current version of the After Effects beta. I've imported this clip of me on my normal YouTube background, right? So I'm wearing this stripy shirt. I'm moving my hands around, the fingers are spread, they're going back together. I lift up an arm. I tried to make a clip that would be challenging for the roto brush. Uh, so let's just test this out and see how it goes. So first step is grab the roto brush, jump in here. And if you haven't used the rotor brush, what we need to do is tell what part of the frame needs to be isolated. So why don't I go to a frame like right here where all my fingers are spread out and I've got this green icon over top. I can increase or decrease the brush size by holding control or command and then clicking and dragging left and right to make that brush bigger or smaller. And I'm just going to click and drag basically around me. It doesn't need to be absolutely everything, but I'll just make an outline and then that magenta highlight, that's what's being selected. So it did a pretty good job. I need to include some more here. So I'm just gonna click and drag and just make sure that I get everything. Make my brush smaller. Again, controller command, click and drag to do that. And if you ever need to remove something from the selection, so let's say this part right here, it's including in the selection. I'm gonna hold Alter Option. That turns it to a minus red icon. I'll click and drag in here to say, None of this should be in my selection. That's pretty good. Let's get in nice and tight, make sure I get my shirt, make this even smaller and get rid of this section here. And I'm just gonna continue doing this until I have the whole thing selected. Okay, I've got the whole thing pretty much selected. And like I said, I was trying to make something that was a little bit challenging for the Roto Brush. My background is not simple, plain, isolated background. So it's already going to be a little bit more difficult separating me from the background, considering that this is just a bunch of pixels as far as After Effects is concerned. The striped shirt, that's giving a lot more detail. Um, it's not just a solid color. So this should be a challenge for the most part. Um, but now that I've got that done, I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna switch over to the Refine Edge tool which is what allows you to preserve fine details like the hair on my head. So I'm going to take this tool, same controls to resize it, and then just brush over all of this edge, all of the selected edge that has my hair, and it's going to grab that edge and refine it to make a mat that feathers out with the softness of my hair. And it does a really fantastic job. It's pretty incredible how well this works. Now that that's done, I've set my selection I need to tell After Effects to analyze forward and backward. So why don't we go forward and I'm just gonna press the page down key and you see right here, this selection right here is what's targeted as the range of the roto brush. I don't necessarily need all of this, but every time I press the page down key to go another frame forward, it's going to analyze the next frame and try and maintain my selection. So I'm just gonna continue doing this and look at my hand. I mean, honestly, it's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, there was, quite a bit of movement from this frame to this, so it selected some of my sign in the background, but if I just go to the Roto Brush tool, deselect that, then it should make that selection better. Same thing right here. Um, I'm not too worried about that motion since it's so fast, uh, but I think I'm just gonna continue on and I'm gonna skip ahead by frame uh, factors of 10 frames per jump. So I'm gonna hold shift and press page down, let After Effects analyze all those frames, which look how fast that was. I mean, I don't use the rotor brush all that often, but I don't think it's usually that fast. We'll take a look at comparisons in a little bit, but I'm just gonna, again, go in here, check uh, for things that should not be selected and paint those out, and then continue on. And I'll do this for the whole clip. Ha, and who noticed that little message? I should have paid attention to why that was yellow. I'm not viewing this at 100%, so Controller Command J to do that. Now it's gonna repropagate. This is gonna give me better results. Uh, that's probably part of why it went so fast last time, but still, look at how fast that's going. I mean, 
That was impressive. All right, let's keep going. And hold the phone. Did it make a selection of my hand? That was not at all even in frame when I first started this. And when I pulled it, uh, look at that. When my hand goes up, it just automatically was like, oh yeah, that's still part of you. Even in here, look behind my hand where the hole is. I didn't do that. I'm not exaggerating here. I'm seriously impressed that it was able to identify that, yeah, that's part of the subject. That's your arm coming up into frame and we're gonna make that selection. I am seriously, I'm pretty impressed with how well this is working. I, how quickly it's going and how it's keeping everything in selection. Look at that, my hand's shapes changed from thumbs up to pointing up and it, it's just making selection. If you've never done Roto before, you have no idea what this is. Like this is incredible, the work that it's doing for me in seconds. All right, we got a little bit of artifacting here, some stuff that's showing up that shouldn't. So let's find the problem frame right there, deselect that, go forward, make sure that gets out of there and that I bring in the rest of my hand. But this is very minor details. If I, you know, only needed to put something behind my head, and not my fingers, then I wouldn't even have to worry about this part of the selection. Okay, so it is struggling a little bit to separate my finger from the neon sign in the background, uh, but you know that's just something that you have to deal with. The fact that I don't have to do manual work frame by frame with a mask and Bezier paths is pretty incredible. Other hand looks fine. Hair selection looks great. Now granted, the, the camera is on a, uh, you know, a mount. It's not moving around, so there's no camera movement. That's probably helping it. And the fact that I'm not moving my head around a ton is also very helpful. But this is the kind of thing that I would probably want. I'd wanna be able to isolate my head very easily so I could put text or other graphics behind me very easily. I just noticed that when I turned my head, the refined edge, that didn't really track as well. So I'm gonna back up a few frames and fix that. So I'm gonna switch back to my refine edge tool. There's a lot of things to keep an eye on from frame to frame. So just make sure you're looking around the whole thing and capturing everything that needs to be tracked. All right, I'm just gonna press O to get to the out point, let it propagate the rest, because I know there's not much more movement at that point. And that's where I'm gonna come into this range right here and set my freeze range to that frame. So I'm gonna hold shift. Actually, nope, can't hold shift, but I'll just zoom in nice and close, make sure that's the last frame that I'm going to try and use the rotor brush with. And I think that did a great job. Yeah, I was right, since I'm not moving around that much. I mean, even my ear, you know, it's behind my head and then it comes out again, it's locking onto that really nicely. Now I just need to do the same thing for the first part of the clip, so I'm gonna go in reverse. All right, I've gotten through the whole thing. I haven't paid, you know, the most attention to this. I'm trying to get it done quickly, but I think for the little amount of work that I had to do, we've got a decent selection. Now I need to freeze the roto brush and we're gonna run a timer to see how long it takes After Effects beta version to do this. And I did the exact same thing in the current version of After Effects, and here's the side-by-side -side results. You can see that the beta version was about 13% faster than the current version of After Effects, which isn't two to five times faster. That's not what I experienced with my machine in this particular clip, but it's still an improvement. It is faster. And one of the other benefits of the beta version is that it can take advantage of propagated frames when freezing. So this freezing process will hopefully go quicker as you go back and forth. If you find something that went wrong and you need to get back in, unfreeze it, do some more of the roto brush, and then freeze it again, that should go quicker for you. And there are obviously lots of other things to consider. I was using compressed MP4 footage. If I would have made that an image sequence, it could have sped things up, but I really wanted to just try the way that I probably would be doing this if I was using the roto brush tool and I quickly wanted to make something like this, where you have graphics flying behind my head, maybe some text or whatever it is. I just wanna use the studio setup that I have here to make these videos and quickly export a video, roto something really quick, have a mat that works for what I need it to do and do it as quickly as possible. And I think the beta version of the roto brush is an improvement. I'm happy with it. I think you should get in there, install the beta version. There's nothing stopping you from using both. They can be installed side by side and project files from one can be opened in the other. So if you're gonna work in the After Effects beta, I would just say, you know, back up your project file every so often. I've never had a project file from the beta version corrupt, but just keep your 
yourself safe, make a backup, and then you're good to go. I think you'll be impressed with how stable the beta version of After Effects is. I'm seriously impressed with the Rotobrush tool. I'm glad that it's getting attention and always being updated. The AI model that they're using clearly works. You saw when my hand came up, that Rotobrush selection stayed with it. It's smart enough to start identifying objects, and I think it's just going to get better. So I welcome all of these updates to the Rotobrush tool, especially because I remember what it was like manually rotoing out a shot using vector paths. Still, sometimes you have to do that, but if the roto brush just keeps improving, that's gonna make more and more scenarios easier to approach and roto out. So go ahead and install the After Effects beta. Check out this new roto brush version. See if it's faster on your machine than previous versions. Don't forget to go check out Launch into After Effects at jakeinmotion.com and join the Discord server down in the description. I'd love to see you in there. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And, 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 and,